Hello, and welcome to this lesson, which will provide you with an overview of discounted cash flow valuation. After you have finished this lesson, you will be able to Firstly, define and explain the basic concept of discounted cash flow valuation. And secondly, understand the four steps in performing a discounted cash flow valuation. To begin with, the discounted cash flow method adjusts valuations for the time value of money. In other words, the estimated future cash flows of an organization or asset are used to value it, but the cash flows then need to be adjusted to their present value to reflect the time value of money. This is done by using a discount rate, which is usually an organization's cost of capital, or more commonly known as the weighted average cost of capital. The slide explains this time value of money concept. Please review the example and ensure you understand it before proceeding. The slide shows how the discounted cash flow process works in practice, where the estimated future cash flows are adjusted to the present value to reflect the time value of money by using the discounting process. The discount factor used in the calculation adjusts for risk and timing, and the terminal value estimates cash flows after the forecast period into perpetuity. The slide shows how you should calculate the free cash flow in your forecasts. The weighted average cost of capital approach is by far the most common version of the discounted cash flow valuation method. Cash flows are normally calculated on an annual basis. Therefore, you need to calculate cash flows for every year in the forecast period, then apply the weighted average cost of capital to discount the future cash flows. The sum of all discounted future cash flows is the enterprise value. Some other points to note. In the cash flows, there should be no adjustment for inflation, and cash flows should be calculated after tax, but before interest and dividends. With the terminal value, this is calculated at the end of year N, with N being the final year of the forecast period. A terminal value is needed because it is normally assumed that an organization or asset will continue to exist after the forecast period, and that there will be a sustainable free cash flow following this period. Exceptions to this rule are when there is no residual value left in the asset such as an oil well at the end of its useful life, or when assets are to be liquidated or sold at the end of the forecast period. The sustainable free cash flow is normally approximated as the free cash flow in year N plus 1, in other words, the first year following the forecast period. Mathematically, the terminal value of these continuous future cash flows is calculated as a perpetual annuity. Two popular forms of this calculation have been established. Perpetuity and growing perpetuity, as shown in the slide. In this final section of the lesson, you will learn how to perform a discounted cash flow valuation in four steps and apply the theory to a case study. The four steps are, firstly, to project free cash flows. Secondly, to discount the projected free cash flows at the weighted average cost of capital. Thirdly, to calculate and discount the terminal value. And fourthly, to calculate the relevant value metric, such as enterprise value. Here is the short case study you will work through during the remainder of this lesson. Please take time to read it before progressing and consider what a fair standalone value of Cable Co. would be. The first step in performing a discounted cash flow valuation is to project free cash flows. This step has five key tasks, as shown in the slide. 
These are Firstly, to project revenues for the forecast period. Secondly, to determine the EBIT numbers based on the revenue margin information. Thirdly, to determine tax expenses based on the EBIT and calculate net operating profit after taxes. Fourthly, to determine depreciation expenses. And lastly, to calculate the free cash flows for the forecast period. Take some time to calculate your answers, step by step, based on the case study information. You can then compare your results with the answers that follow. Here are the outputs of the projected revenues and EBIT numbers, based on the expected growth forecasts. Here are the outputs of the net operating profit after taxes and depreciation expenses calculations based on the assumed tax rate and depreciation charge. In this last task, ensure you add back depreciation, which is a non-cash related expense, but subtract the cash flow required for networking capital and subtract allowances for capital expenditure. The output will be your free cash flows for the forecast period. The second step in performing a discounted cash flow valuation is to discount the projected free cash flows at the weighted average cost of capital. This step has two key tasks, as shown in the slide. These are, firstly, to determine the appropriate weighted average cost of capital and calculate the annual discount factors. And secondly, to apply the annual discount factors to each projected free cash flow and calculate its present value. Here are the outputs. The weighted average cost of capital was given as 10% which allows you to calculate the appropriate annual discount factor. Applying these discount factors to each projected free cash flow gives us the present value of each cash flow. The third step in performing a discounted cash flow valuation is to calculate and discount the terminal value. This step has four key tasks, as shown in the slide. These are Firstly, to select the appropriate forecast period or N number of years. Secondly, to determine the sustainable free cash flow after year N for the terminal value calculation. Thirdly, to determine the terminal growth rate and apply the perpetuity formula to calculate the terminal value at the end of year N. And lastly, to discount the terminal value at the end of year N to today. Here are the outputs of the first two tasks. The case study requested valuation to be performed on a four-year horizon. And as you already calculated the free cash flow in year 5, you have determined the free cash flow value after year N that is necessary for the terminal value calculation. To determine the terminal growth rate, you need to apply the growing perpetuity formula, which you covered earlier in the lesson. Here, you use the weighted average cost of capital and the growing long-term revenue forecast, which is 2%, as mentioned in the case study, to arrive at a terminal growth rate of 12.5. You should use this growth rate to calculate the terminal value at the end of year N. In this last task, discount the terminal value at the end of year N to today's value by using the discount factor you have previously calculated for year 4. The final step in performing a discounted cash flow valuation is to calculate the relevant value metric, which is normally enterprise value or equity value. This step has two key tasks as shown in the slide. These are, firstly, to calculate the enterprise value as the sum of all discounted cash flows, including terminal value. 
and secondly, to subtract the net debt to get the equity value. Here are the outputs. To calculate the enterprise value, simply sum all discounted cash flows over the forecast period, including terminal value, and subtract Cableco's net debt, minus excess cash, to arrive at the equity value. Either of these values would represent a fair standalone valuation of Cable Co. The discounted cash flow technique is widely used by business professionals for its ability to capture the underlying drivers of an organization, such as the cost of capital and growth rates. However, cash flow projections can involve a high level of uncertainty and subjectivity particularly for organizations that operate in volatile sectors like technology or fast-moving consumer goods. And the valuation is very sensitive to the assumptions made by the analyst, particularly when it comes to the cost of capital. Even small adjustments here can cause valuations to vary widely, so use sensitivity analyses to understand the impact of different assumptions. The terminal value carries a large share of the total valuation, which places a lot of certainty on the organization achieving sustainable cash flows over the long term. Again, use sensitivity analysis here to understand the impact of different assumptions. In summary, you have understood the basic concept of discounted cash flow valuation and used a case study to understand the four steps in performing a discounted cash flow valuation. Thank you for participating and see you next time on another exciting business training lesson from Pontema.